Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 32. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? We have a fun little episode for you guys today, although the info's probably going to be a little late, depending on how you listen to or watch this. We're going to talk about the Nova Open spoilers that happened for us yesterday. Yeah, it's uh, some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Particularly one thing I'm interested in. Yeah. So, without any further ado, let's jump into this. Sounds good. Alright, we're going to group things a little better than GW did, where they, like, kind of scatterbrained, bounced back and forth between all the different games. Well, I mean, they wanted to make it feel more than it was. They wanted to hold the 40k playing audience hostage on Twitch so they wouldn't leave until the end. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, do you want to get the big story out of the way first uh are we talking about the mega gargan and aos no 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 there's new corn berserkers brad oh okay let's do 40k so yes the key things of 40k is they announced the codices that are coming leagues of otan comes later this month <laughs> um and then guard some, oh my god and then sometime this winter <laughs> there is legends that the guard codex may eventually show up Imagine if it's delayed. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then they were very clear, very clear multiple times to mention that Guard is coming before World Eaters. Please stop memeing on us. We're aware we fucked up. I can see it now. It's going to be delayed because of some supply chain or whatever. And it's like, no, it'll be out 2023. <laughs> It's heavily delayed at this point. They obviously had issues with the leaked lineup because we know that Guard is getting a range refresh. Yeah. Like they're getting like a ton of new models that got leaked. Seems like it's a pretty big thing. So yeah, but there was more than likely an issue with making those, which is why this codex has been pushed off so long. Yeah, that would make sense. So like I feel for them on that side of things of like this was not their intention to release it, you know, after fucking leagues. But I'm still going to meme on them for screwing up by having it like a year after it should have came out. <laughs> More importantly, because there is no mention of Old World on the horizon, unless they shock us, next year is going to be the new 40k edition, which means Guard and World Leaders are going to have a codex for between six and four months, depending on what the definition of winter is. Uh, I mean, I think it's going to be a little bit longer than that, but... Well, they always launch the new game in June. That's true. Yeah. They will announce it in spring. It will launch in June. If it's super late, it will launch in July. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems very likely that 10th is soon, especially from a bunch of the changes that they've been making. And it's just like they're gearing up for it. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, the Demon Codex was clearly written with 10th in mind. That's why it's a huge nerf compared to everything else other than a couple of broken data sheets that'll get crushed. And then Leagues of Otan that leaked earlier this afternoon definitely learned all the lessons from the edition and repeated all of the mistakes at once. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it repeated every single one of them. I haven't fully looked into it yet, but... And as much as we're memeing, I don't think the world is ending with the Leagues of Otan Codex. No. It has a lot of keywords to make Redditors rustle their jimmies, but we'll we'll cover that when it officially comes out and we can get our hands on real copies. I think they said end of September? Sometime soon, yeah. It's in yeah. September. Yeah, so it's not too far away, which is nice. So they did talk about the Leagues of Otan army set coming out before the Codex, but I don't think they gave a specific date on that either. Unless I missed it. The army set is so weird. So in the articles and stuff, they like vaguely mentioned like Chaos Demons technically isn't out yet. It's pre-order. By the time you guys hear this, it's out. But yeah. And then Leagues of Otan is supposed to be the army box coming just after that. And then the rest of the army shows up with the codex after that. Right still in september so my guess is like they may be pre-ordering next week for the army box and then it'll probably be like last day of september technically september <laughs> that's kind of what i was thinking they'll do the pre-order for the codex for real and all that yeah that would that would make sense that would give a decent amount of time so they did reveal more stuff including said army box and 
I'm not thrilled with the army box. I was kind of expecting a lot more out of it. I think it's fine. I mean, it's got the character that apparently can also be kitted out of some other things. And then it's got the three pioneers, so the bikes, and 20 warriors. Yeah, so it's got two minimum size units of troops, an HQ, and a biker. Yeah. And and that's like less than most combat patrols would have. And this is like the army box, you want to buy this because it's better than the unlimited edition boxes that are supposed to come after. But like, I can't see the combat patrol being less than this army box. No, there's no way. No, 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 no. Which, I mean, maybe they're trying to change how they're pushing the army set in the combat patrol. I can't see that. They just fixed the combat patrol thing. Although maybe they're selling like crap. Who knows? Yeah, because I mean, there's there's no way they could get away with doing less than like this is to me. This is fine, but it's like the minimum for a set box kind of thing be it combat patrol army set whatever that is it it's fine but like it's the minimum <laughs> yeah but usually like army boxes are like a thousand points they're like a christmas box where like yeah it feels special and you're like pressured into wanting to buy it it's got the fomo thing i have no fear of missing this army box even if this is like the coolest thing to me because like oh boy it's two boxes of troops a box of fast attack and an HQ sprue. It has me concerned for how much they're going to be pricing those. Oh, through the moon. Is it going to be like 60 bucks for the HQ? <laughs> like, what are we doing here? So normally these army boxes cost like 200 US dollars minimum. And this is like four kits and it'll it'll do the whole it comes with a codex that's special edition and it comes with a set of cards and we call the cards forty five dollars we call collector's codex fifty five dollars yeah but you're still supposed to have like the models be savings compared to if you just bought the kits separately yeah so what do troops cost nowadays like 50 60 bucks a box yeah 45 if you're lucky Everything that, like, you've said is, it has me concerned for the pricing of these kits. Which is even worse, because, like, these squats look cool as shit, dude. Or, like, he's a Votan. Like, they did a great job on a lot of these models. I'm excited. Dude, they revealed the, one of the other things they revealed was that mage character. Yeah. It looks so amazing. Yeah, that's legit, dude. I love that model, which is funny, because it, like... Other than the fact that the drone guys have guns on them, it looks like an <laughs> AOS model, which is why it looks so much better than the rest of the 40k lineup, because AOS just looks better than 40k. It honestly does have a lot of resemblance to AOS. Yes. And I can't help but, like, imagine, like, in the office, this is the AOS guy shows up to, like, the 40k room, sits everyone <laughs> down, and he's like, here's how you hammer out some character in your characters. And he's, like, giving him a lesson. He whips this up in, like, a day. Yeah, and he just does this model. <laughs> then their whole team, like, goes out for, like, the next three weeks and can't make anything nearly this good. Yeah. I mean, the, whatever it's called, the the Lane Fortress... I love that model. The Ninja Turtle truck? Yeah. I love that model. I'll, I'll probably actually buy that model, even if I don't play squats, just because I like it's so fucking cool to me. <laughs> I like pretty much the entire range, other than I'm not a huge fan of the, the Slayers, the half-naked fast attack duders, or elite, whatever they'll end up being. Yeah. They're fine. I just, I always hate that. The, the like, now we've got your army, but you take the shirts off and now they are fast and have a big weapon, but no save. Yeah. And they're crazy. Yeah. Every army has one and it's like lame. Yeah. And I mean, I still have like a lot of the models I showed off don't have like the helmets and I'm just not a big fan of humanoid without helmets for the models, especially because a lot of the helmets are pretty fucking cool looking. I don't I don't opinion. really like the dome helmets. I I think they look like I know you love StarCraft, but <laughs> yeah. I don't like the StarCraft helmets. I like it. The one I really loved is the HQ who has the golden like sculpted mask. Yeah. And I was like that looks amazing. That one is very cool. 
If their helmets looked like that, I would be like all for putting helmets on everyone. But I don't think their helmets look that great. Especially the half open helmets are like a crime. Yeah, those are kind of dumb. But I'm I'm excited. I think it's cool. There's a decent amount of models for a new line. There's definitely going to be a lot more that they can do with it. I'd be interested in us going back, seeing what we predicted would be in the original launch box. Like the launch box slash the launch of the codex, what would be there. Yeah. And seeing how correct or incorrect we were. Because we kind of did that like the day they showed off that first bike. Right, right. I'm still so disappointed that there's not a aircraft. Yeah. Like, I guess I'm not that surprised. I didn't see it coming, to be honest. I, I don't see dwarves getting an airship in their first release. I really, really want to see what they do with it, though. Because, like, it could be so cool. It could be, like, orcs level cool. It can't start with it because everyone will then just go AOS. It's just AOS. There's already enough of that going on. The second they revealed the cool gold mask, people were like, AOS dwarves do that. Yeah, but who cares? Like, come on. <laughs> just just accept it and have fun with it. So, like, the final count after they revealed all the rest of the models is, like, we've got the dual build captain that becomes a whatever. Right. The melee champion model, whatever. The tech priest slash tech marine slash whatever that comes with servitors that aren't servitors. Yeah, those are weird. They don't look that good. I... Considering that, like... There's also this mage with a pair of those servitor guys, but they're, like, way cooler. Yes. <laughs> like, I, I like the idea of it. So then you've got your mage HQ. So there's four HQs total, which sounds about right. It's three kits, four HQs. And I think there might be a fifth that's just, like, the captain but named. Yeah. And then you've got basic troop. You've got elite terminator equivalent. You've got fast runny boy equivalent. Bike. Bikes. Dudes carrying big guns, a tank, and a dedicated transport. It's such a classic boom, boom, boom. We got like one of all the basics. That's it. No extras. It is what you need to make an army. It lets you build a very balanced army. Yes. And I mean, that's that's what you want out of a, a starting thing. And like the cool factor is the models are cool. And hopefully there's some interesting stuff in the actual abilities I, i've seen some of the judgment tokens or whatever the your name's oh, in the book yes <laughs> so like that's that's where the excitement is coming from and dude i'm i'm here for it like it should be very interesting to see how they play out compared to everything else but i don't think they're going to be busted but i think they're going to be solid just because they have good options that's kind of where I am. So, like, I read through the Codex this afternoon, the leaked one. Yeah. I don't want to, like, break down the whole Codex because, again, it's not officially even out yet. Yeah. We don't know. Like, this could be, like, just a really, really elaborate ruse. It. I don't think so. I think it's the real deal, but whatever. <laughs> so, I think they'll need a couple nerf bats like every Codex has. Not everyone, but... Uh... <laughs> since Since Admech, more or less. <laughs> yeah and once they get those i think they'll be fine i i'm not reddit doomer here but anyway then we did get those world eater berserkers like you said when you were trying to be sarcastic because you don't care well no so it is nice that there's some new corn berserkers they're really old models but there's nothing special with them like they're corn berserkers no it's just updated sculpts it's just sculpts that aren't from 1998. Yeah. It's all I want out of a Seraphim range refresh, honestly. Yeah. Do it all again, but do it with, like, not 1998 graphics here. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's nice, but, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's just not something that really that interests me. And, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's some people that are super excited for it. But I gotta say, model-wise, the end of this year is going to be huge for 40k. Because, like, Votan's coming with a whole truckload of new models. Yeah. We know from the leaks that Guard is getting a range refresh. And hopefully it comes out this year. Yeah. And then Korn is coming out with at least a couple new models, because we've already seen Angron and we've already seen the Korn Berserkers. And I think it's been hinted that there's more. 
Yeah, they'll probably get, you know, one or two more unique things to make it feel different than just playing CSM, but... Yeah, which is good. It won't be too much. I'm not going to pretend it's going to be more than, like, Thousand Suns got. It's just going to be your basic... But it's also not the, like, here's a model. Yeah. (laughs) So there's going to be a lot of 40k stuff this year. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Real quick to move into AOS. They confirmed the rest of the AOS lineup for the year. Obviously, Zeech and Lumineth are coming like in a couple weeks. Yeah. And then it's going to be Ogres and Sons of Behemoth, which boy, did I feel bad for Ogre players on that one because the second they showed the Ogre model and it's just the token, here's your HQ because you're not getting shit this edition. Yeah. I was like, Ogres, <laughs> I don't think have gotten a new model since the launch of Age of Sigmar. And like, we're on the the plane of beasts. We're in the realm of beasts. The, the destruction realm. And they're like, Ogres, here's your token character. Fuck off for another edition. That's the thing that gets me. One of the coolest parts about AOS is like the, you're playing heroes, you're playing monstrous things like you know it's not just troop spam yeah it's it's not what old world was where it's a lot more um vanilla feeling yeah and like to me when i think of like the classic like big monster an ogre comes to mind like ogres are where it's at right like the titan scary monster it's just gonna smash you with a club like it's just Come on, man. It's not that hard to have cool ogres. <laughs> it's also the fact that ogres get to ride all of the the Age of Sigmar equivalents of mammoths and stuff. Right. You've got the, the stone breakers and whatever else they're called. I forget what the names are. The, the big mammoth and the bigger mammoth. <laughs> Which is so cool. <laughs> it's very strange to me that ogres is just getting a token character and getting told to fuck off in the edition that is supposed to be beast focused. Yeah. Or at least the front half of it is, because apparently there's, like, leaks that next year is going to be focused in, like, the Realm of Light and is going to come with another expansion of some bullshit. Yeah, it's going to be more, like, humanoid, normal people kind of thing. Oh, we know the Crusade is coming, that's right. Yeah, Stormbringer Crusade is coming, so that's what it'll be next. Then Sons of Behemoth, King Brood. Yeah, Broad, Brood, Broad, Broad. Broad. He's got two Ds. I feel bad because, like, his his tusk thing was a giant bait and switch because it looked like a knoblar on a tusk, so you thought it was going to be ogres, and it's like, no, it's this asshole. I will say, his model looks amazing. I was just going to say, I was like, it's a solidly good AOS model. Like, top <laughs> tier, that weapon alone is amazing, but it's just also very sad considering... You know, people were kind of hoping that they might get new <laughs> ogre stuff. I do think this basically, if they update the little giants, then I think they'll basically be where knights are in 40k, considering they're basically the same army. But now they've got like their name character that's going to be added to the the big Sons of Bayamot kit so that they've got their big giant that can be three different nameless ones or a named one. Right. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying now. And then they just need to update the little giants to, you know, not look like trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there was also the Slaves to Darkness launch set. Yes. And their box is equally tiny, but AOS boxes always are. Yeah. The point stuff is different with AOS. That new Demon Prince is cool. Yeah, he was the one that got leaked early and they had to show him off like a couple times ago on a preview thing. And I still like those wings. I know, the wings are like the best part of them. Yeah. I'm super interested in both the Minotaur guys, the Ogroids or whatever they're called, and the Chosen look like, what if CSM was just better? <laughs> it just, I just, I feel like Slaves to Darkness is like the cooler Daniel meme to like csm it's aos is has taken csm and done it better yeah in modeling because they just are better modelers <laughs> what if you weren't tied to these really stupid sculpts because you have to follow power armor rules yeah yeah i i actually do like the minotaurs especially the one that's got like the horn it's just so like dude's out there doing his best <laughs> yeah i there's not that much that they showed off for AOS. Like, I think what's there is cool. I think AOS people were kind of hoping for a bit more. 
but yeah, eh. I think so. But like like you said, I think there's going to be a pretty big shakeup within six to eight months or something like that. So with the Crusades or whatever. Yeah. And then the final reveal, the most important, awesome reveal is, oh my god, there's a new Horus model for after he's become the, the not a demon, but a, like, ascended Primarch. Oh my god, it's so, oh, it's, it's Forge World Resin, never mind. Yeah, I, I looked at the model and I was like, that's pretty fucking badass. Like, Horus ascended? Yeah, but Resin... <laughs> specifically forge world resin because like 3d print resin is not that bad forge world resin is like the worst crap i've ever dealt with i think the thing is, is like most of the time 3d printed stuff if it's bad they just chuck it yeah <laughs> and i don't think forge world does that <laughs> i think they're just like pack it up ship it <laughs> they don't they don't waste there no no it's peak efficiency <laughs> the model looks sweet dude and it's disappointing that like resin and all that stuff but i think there was like one other random thing from warhammer underworlds yeah no one cares about underworlds we can skip that but i don't know anything about that so nope, nope. not a real game <laughs> not a game <laughs> yeah i would say this overall a nice little update yeah, nothing groundbreaking and shattering. I guess Leagues of Otan being this early was surprising, but we got to see the rest of their launch lineup, which I think is like the main reason this even exists is just so that they could finish off the reveals there. And then to flesh it out, they're like, we have to show some stuff for AOS and uh... let's show them how little they're getting. Yeah. <laughs> This is the rest of your year, AOS. Welcome to 2021 40K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it did follow, like, exactly how the 40K 9th edition launch went, where, like, there was six months of literally nothing, like, two codices come out over six months of the edition starting up, and then you start sprinkling in some codices, and they all just have their generic, like, here's your character for the edition. Yep. And, <laughs> and then it's like, okay, uh... Uh, we're like halfway through the edition now, guys. When are we going to get like new stuff? <laughs> yeah. All right. That wraps up all of the stuff from the Nova reveals. Obviously, it's a bit dated by the time you guys get this, but we had to hit record so that this could get made. So we couldn't wait any longer for any news. And yeah, I mean, we just kind of wanted to talk about it because it's cool. <laughs> like it was fun. So Yeah. <laughs> I I am very interested in when Votan comes out, like, doing an actual breakdown of it. Yeah. We have it on pretty good authority through very official means that it looks like it's got some pretty cool sub-faction stuff to talk about, so I'd love to do, like, a sub-faction episode on them once we've got a little, like, testing in, rather than, like, reading crappy iPhone pictures. Yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> once they come out for a little while, we'll... We'll definitely do another one of those sub-faction things, because hopefully, hopefully they're good. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be the problem with Leagues of Votan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, that does it for the episode, though. Let's get out of here. Sounds good.